of FODMAP every day. We're very excited today to be here with Chevy and Gracie of Frusano. All of you, I'm sure, who have registered for this have an interest in fructose malabsorption and fructose intolerances. That is our topic for the day. And we're very excited about this because, you know, sometimes we talk about IBS in a very broad sense, and then sometimes we're uh, honing in on specific things that coexist. And certainly issues with fructose is something that comes up time and time again. And we're very lucky that there are companies like Frusano who are focusing on this. Um, so they are they're producing products for you uh, so that you can eat well and still take care of yourself medically. So as I'm going to send it right over to Chevy so he can tell us a little bit about Frisano as a company, which apparently is turning 17 this coming month. So they've been around for a while, even if they're new to you, they definitely know their ways in and, and around uh, fructose issues. So I'll let you take it away, Chevy. And, and we really want to know, you know, how did you get involved with this and uh, tell us what and who Frisano is? Thank you, Dede. Thank you, everyone, for joining and coming. Uh, and thank you for giving us the opportunity to to also to, to share with the community who Fruzano is, because as, as you mentioned, Fruzano, uh, it has been around for almost seven, 17 years. Uh, we are celebrating our 17th anniversary uh, on March 23rd. Uh, the company was founded uh, because the founder, Mr. U uh oh, we lost you. We lost you. You're muted. No, again. There we go. You're back. Okay, great. So, uh, <laughs> so Fruzano, as I was mentioning, sorry, Fruzano was founded because uh, Ulf Herman, the Fruzano's founder, he was diagnosed with fructose intolerance in 2005. And uh, he was then started searching for products suitable for, uh, for his. Uh, his new diagnose, which was uh, again fructose malabsorption, okay, and he realized that uh, there were very little products available for his diet. Uh, so then he started basically making uh, fruit spreads in in his kitchen, and started selling them uh, in the German speaking countries. So basically, it was Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. Then uh, I started my relationship with Fruzano and with fructose malabsorption uh, in a similar way as, as Ulf, a little bit later though. Uh, in 2015, my daughter, uh, she was diagnosed as, as having with or suffering with fructose malabsorption. She has been having uh, belly problems all her life. So this inflated belly, uh, lots of problems going to the bathroom, uh, some skin issues as well. Uh, and and by doing lots of tests, the gluten intolerance, the lactose intolerance, so all of tests. So we found out that she was fructose malabsorption. I said, okay, what, what the hell is that? What's fructose malabsorption? So we started searching for for products for all for her for her diet and and again the the day to day life it's kind of, of of okay so you you could you could kind of handle it the the main difficulties were starting for example at breakfast because if you think what you eat for breakfast most of the things that you eat for breakfast they they don't contain uh, fructose or high fructose corn syrup so that that was the the largest difficulty for us. Uh, so by searching in the internet, we found a company, a German company. Everything was in German at that point of time. Okay, looks like that those guys, they're making fructose-free products. So let's order them. We order them. We receive them at home. My daughter tried them. They were working very well for her diet. Said, okay, fine. It looks like that we found someone. Then a few months later, a friend also started uh, with the same same issues. Hi, Chevy. I remember that your daughter suffers from fructose intolerance. Uh, is that correct? Oh, yeah. Uh, fructose malabsorption. No. What do you do with that? So, well, we found that company, this company called Fruzano in Germany, which we are purchasing products and looks like they're working. Then we started making orders for the two of us. Then a friend of a friend started. So then we, at that point, we were starting making orders for the three of us. <laughs> and at one point of time, we said, "Okay, let's let's do you 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 are all going to 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 know this scene uh, at the evening when you are cooking dinner at the same time that you are preparing the following day's lunch, kids with homework, and the Fruzano package arrived. 
I was like, wow, it, it was an, an absolute nightmare picking up those things that uh, those were for friend A, those were for friend B, those were for us. And my wife said, ah, I'm going to set up a shop. I said, mm, that's a good idea. And we started being Fruzano's distributor in Spain. Okay, so this was back in 2017. Uh, then uh, the distribution network that we were setting for Fusano in Spain started to grow. And in 2019, uh, the distribution company that we set up in Spain was, well, has been absorbed by Fruzano. Okay, so we, oh, so Fruzano I at that point. Interrupt you for a second because, I mean, no just wine. So, you know, up to, it said that up to 40% uh, of adults worldwide um, are affected by fructose intolerance. So this is this is a big issue. I mean, obviously you're talking about your your personal experiences, which are important, but we want to understand that this is a broad issue and we also believe that it's underdiagnosed, correct? So correct. I was just hoping if you could help us understand a little bit between the difference between uh, dietary fructose intolerance, which sometimes people might see referred to as DFI for the dietary fructose intolerance, and then you have hereditary fructose intolerance, HFI. And I don't know if you could help us understand the differences and how does one become diagnosed? Yes, uh, that that's a very good point. Uh, the day. So uh, there, there are two type of uh, fructose intolerances. Uh, one of them is uh, the hereditary fructose intolerance, which is a, a genetic disease, which is basically found on the first months of of of, of life uh, when you are starting giving a, a kid some some food that generally contains fruit. Uh, and this is uh, a health threatened uh, issue. This is affecting one out of uh, 10,000 or one out of 15,000 people. Okay, so that's a rare disease. The most common one, the, which is the one that you are talking about, is uh, fructose malabsorption, which, uh, which, is, which is estimated that could affect around 40% of the global population. Okay, fructose malabsorption is a malfunction of the fructose transporter in in the the intestine, which is called uh, GLUT5. Okay, so those transporters, they may not be working well, or they may be a lack of those transporters. Okay, and so I think those... that what's interesting, what's important to note is I think that some people know that honey, for instance contains fructose. In fact, it might be the only food, sort of common food that we all have in our house that people are aware contains fructose. But there's many, many other food products that contain either naturally contain fructose, like honey yes. does, or as you said, products on the shelf. You're going out to buy condiments, candies, cereals, like whatever it is. There's many, many products that have uh, fructose added or have a fructose content. So, so Fusano is addressing this with a wide variety of products. So for people who are diagnosed uh, with either of these issues, they, they have food that they can eat, right? So yep. now, Robin, did you want to do a poll? We have a poll. I don't know if this is a good time to run it. There should be a poll that's going to come up on your screen for all of you, because we want to get a sense of who's here and your uh, buying habits and uh, what have you. So if you guys can see the poll now and be sure to scroll down, there's actually three questions. and. This will really help us understand uh, the audience who's here today and give us some sense of your uh, shopping patterns. And also, you know, in terms of shopping patterns, also what products do you wish you could find that maybe are more difficult for you? And so, you know, Chevy, while well, this is coming in, so so you jumped in, you and your wife jumped in, you got involved with Frusano, you started working on bringing it out of Germany and creating a more global audience for it because you not only understood the, the personal ramifications through your child, 
but you understood that that there were many other people all over the world like you and your family who needed these products. So now what is so day to day, how do you develop, how do you guys develop new products? Like I don't know if Gracie wants to talk now or let's talk about the products that Frusano has and how those can make um, a, a real day-to-day -day difference for people who are dealing with fructose malabsorption. Right. So um, we have, as as we were talking about the, the first meal of the day, breakfast can be a very complicated uh, sort of situation, right? So uh, we offer spreads, lots of different uh, kinds of spreads. We have a, like a hazelnut spread. We have a strawberry rhubarb. Um, we have a lot of spreads that are very, very exciting, <laughs> different kinds of things, not your uh, regular, just uh, sort of grape and, and strawberry spreads. Um, so, you know, your, your breakfast can be really a lot more fun, right? Um, we have granola bars, uh, cereal. Um, we also have a lot of cookies um, because, you know, uh, we have butter cookies or sandwich cookies. Um, and a lot of this stuff uh, comes from looking at uh, products that we know uh, people like and 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 work, uh, re you know, normally in the supermarket, and then thinking, okay, if I if I have a, a fructose malabsorption, what then can I not buy? Right. So we have chocolate, we have milk, chocolate, we have white chocolate, we have dark chocolate, we've got hard candy or gummy bears, right? And we look at these products that um, that you might actually like to have in in your life, but uh, when you can't have a uh, fructose, how can we make an option for for people? So um, we're going to have new products, right? The, the new stuff that you can expect to see from us will have a, a sort of ranch dressing. Um, we'll have, a, you know, a, a chocolate sandwich cookie. Um, so it's it's a lot of stuff that you um, that you can sort of consume on a, on a daily basis, right? So snacks, um, sauces, like ketchup, mustard, um, that kind of thing. So, so that's kind of the, the, what you can expect to see from us, right? We'll, we'll probably just continue in that sort of a snack uh, <laughs> part because that is what really can be difficult. Um, now, this is, you know, people who are here know us through our low FODMAP community, so obviously they also have a low FODMAP interest. So talk a little bit about the fact that you have certified, you have lab tested certified products that are certified by the, both certifying bodies, Monash and FODMAP friendly, but you also do your own lab testing. So, um, this gives people assurances that what they are buying is what it says it is. And I think that that's really important. So if one of you could talk to that, and then also this is sort of related, there's a couple of people who have already asked some questions and mentioned that they have a wheat intolerance, fructans are their issue, or they're gluten-free. So could you also talk a little bit about, you know, well, obviously the products that are, are low FODMAP certified are low FODMAP certified. So they're gonna be low in fructan. So the person who asked that, that was Diane, you, you will know that at the serving sizes uh, set on those particular products, um, they are low FODMAP. Uh, but just talk to us a little bit about your, your testing and certifications. Yep. Uh, Gracie, would you mind if I take the lead on this Go one? Ahead. Okay. So uh, yes, as uh, as you mentioned the day, so we have uh, two products certified. Uh, one is our uh, milk chocolate, which uh, has been certified by Monash. Uh, the milk chocolate that has been certified by Monash is the same chocolate we are using for the rest of our products containing milk chocolate. Okay, so any other product that you see that it contains milk chocolate from Frusano, even though that a specific product does not have the Monash label, it it's exactly the same chocolate like, uh, like don't you have like holiday like there's easter stuff coming up exactly like like some easter easter uh, mini chocolates that uh, that we just put online today so uh everyone will be able to to purchase them in our online shop 
Then the other product that we have uh, certified by those uh, those uh, bodies is the strawberry uh, and rhubarb spread, which as far as we are aware of, this is the only fruit spread that is uh, FODMAP certified in the world. Okay, Why we have these two and not more? Basically because, as I mentioned before, Fruzano, it, uh, it exists since 2005. And uh, since the beginning, all our products have been gluten-free, fructose-free, lactose-free. So we are not only making fructose-free products, all our products are also lactose-free, gluten-free, free from polyols. Okay, So all our products are definitely low in FODMAPs. So we have been doing basically low FODMAP products even before the low FODMAP term existed. So uh, because of that, I just we... interrupt you quickly. So I just want to make sure people hear that because it took me a few times to to register this. So there are about eighty products, right, that you have that exactly. are fructose free, that are lactose free, yes. that are gluten free, and exactly. these are and we know this because your company has done internal testing, lab exactly. testing. We... So so this. Is really important for people to understand. So they do have two products that have either a Monash uh, certification lo logo or a FODMAP friendly certification logo, but their offerings for people that need to be free of lactose, free of gluten, or free of fructose, there's about 80 products. Exactly. That's that's a very important point. Uh, and, and, and that's and and we are keeping testing all our products independently in an independent labs because that's that's very important for us and that's also the key for for the customers that are consuming uh, Fruzano products that all all our products are uh, as they mentioned uh, fructose free lactose free gluten free free from polyols okay and we have all the lab tests that are uh, proving that we uh, lab test every other uh, every single batch that we are producing. And every other product that we, every new product that we are putting into the market. Okay. That's so, amazing. Uh, I don't think when we did, and just so everyone knows, hopefully you've seen the article that's at FODMAP every day already, where we introduced, where we interviewed Chevy and you can see a lot of questions and history of the company and stuff in print. But I don't know that I knew that you actually tested every single batch. Yes, so it's yes. not just like, Oh, you come up with a spread and you test it. You literally test every batch. That's fantastic. Exactly, because one one thing is when you develop a product that uh, you need to make sure that this that this product by the ingredients and the composition it withstands within the certain limits. But of course, during productions there are there are variations that that. Uh, they, they, those the production they have some certain limits. They have some minimum and maximum limits. And even if you control those limits, there could be variations during production. So to guarantee that every product that Fruzano puts into the market, uh, it complies to the fructose freeness, lactose freeness, gluten freeness, free from polyols, and low FODMAP, we test every single batch. So for example, if we and produce chocolate five times per year, each batch has an, indi an individual lab test. And this is, you know, this dovetails so well with questions that we get almost on a daily basis. I'm sure people on this call have noticed that Monash will do an update. It'd be like, well, strawberries were this, now strawberries are that. Blueberries were this, now blueberries are that. And people are constantly confused about how lab testing can show variation. And as Chevy just referenced, the strawberries that they're putting into their spread in a batch that they're making at the beginning of the year are not going to be the same strawberries that they're putting into a, a batch of their spread at the end of the year. They're going, they're most likely going to have a different fructose content. And yes. so they are guaranteeing for you because they are testing every single batch that yes. what's going out onto the shelf still complies. That I don't think that we haven't talked to any other company that's doing that. So that's that's incredibly impressive. Yeah. Thank, th thank you. Yes, and that's 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 the key because we uh, again we we are making products for for people who suffer from health issues. So we need to guarantee that those products uh, are are okay for them. Uh, did they may I take the liberty to ask to answer a couple of questions that are uh, also in the chat? So uh, mm, there is yeah. one question in regards of vegan options. Uh, yes, we do. We do already have some vegan options uh, among our catalogs. So for example, we have a uh, 
one uh, vegan gummy bears, okay, which are uh, gelatin free, uh, plus also the, a dark a dark chocolate. Uh, we are working in other in other vegan options as well. And another question, which is very interesting as well, is in regards of our milk chocolate. Uh, how we, can we make a lactose-free milk chocolate? So basically, we are doing it with lactose-free milk. Okay, so we are not incorporating lactase to to absorb the the milk. We are also doing uh, we are doing it with lactose-free milk. And people, this is it, it. It's a constant question that we get, of course. So dairy being dairy free and being lactose free are not the same thing it is possible to eat dairy but be lactose free um so you know doing education and understanding more about the difference between lactose and dairy is certainly helpful uh if you're you're looking to be lactose free because there are actually many dairy products that you can consume um what countries people want to know um what countries that you deliver to. Okay, right now, uh, I would say that we are capable to deliver uh, worldwide, uh, though, of course, there are, there are several countries which uh, it's easier for us to deliver. So the countries that it's easier for us to deliver would be uh, US, uh, which uh, we have a, a new US store, and uh, we are uh, capable to deliver every, everywhere into US. Uh, any European country as well, so without any problem. Uh, we can deliver to Canada, we can deliver to Australia, we can deliver to any country in South America. Uh, those may take a little bit longer because uh, they are right now, uh, we don't have uh, a lot of uh, business ongoing on those countries, okay, though it may change. Excellent. Excellent. So do you, Gracie, do you want to, we're about halfway through. Do we want to talk a little bit about what you're going to be offering those who have come to the seminar today? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so for you guys, we have actually prepared sort of a pack um, that goes along with this webinar. So it's a little bit of, um, of a taste of all of the different things that we offer in our catalog. Um, there's some milk chocolate puffed uh, rice bites with the milk chocolate that is certified, the strawberry rhubarb spread that we were talking about, um, some sandwich cookies and gummy bears and our, and our ketchup. Um, so actually, if you go to our web shop, um, and then the first, the first kind of thing at the top says new products, and it, it's right there. Um, you'll see the FODMAP everyday webinar pack. And then um, we want to give the all of you uh, a, uh, a coupon code that makes that webinar pack free, okay? So you can just order it. You, you just put in your, your information um, and then you click checkout, okay? And then there's a little spot for a discount code. And then you can just go ahead and put in our, our discount code that we made for you guys today. And that's F E. Yeah, everyone. We have it. Yes, we have it. We put Robin put F it in the chat. Okay. So F E one hundred pack, right? So, <laughs> so that's so it, so you don't have to you know write it down or anything. It's it's in the chat. So that's the that's the code, and you guys can just go ahead and use that with the webinar pack, and it will be totally free um shipping's free we'll just send it to you and then you can try all of our uh, uh well not all but a, a couple of the the products that we think you guys might um might like the most um so that is one promotion we have going on we also have a promotion going on um just that's ongoing right now um with uh fudmap every day and that's just a 20 percent off coupon code it's um FE20, and that is just, you know, on, on their website. So when you guys are perusing FODMAP every day, you'll, you'll see it there. Um, and then at the end of March, as we mentioned, um, is our Fruzano birthday. So that means that we will be having more promotions um, at the end of March. So if you guys decide that you like the products and, and you want to order the pack and everything, um, 
you will be updated about all of the new products that we have coming out, all of the new discounts and, and all of that. Um, are there any questions about the pack or anything? Well, Beth said, is the webinar pack available on non-US sites? I'm not really sure what that question is. The the Beth, the, the uh, pack is just available for the people who are here today. So it's not related with any website. It's just for all of you who are physically attending. The 20% coupon is a general coupon that can be used. Um, it's a code for a single use only. Um, so the information is here. And maybe she's asking, I mean, are, you're going to be sending the the uh, people who use the PAC code, it will be sent to wherever you are in the world. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, it's it's international, uh, but it's for the people who are attending here right now. Um, is the shipping free on the PAC? Yes. There you go. Robin says, uh, is the some something about she means the Frisano European website. Yeah, so, I, 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 I think that those questions are related uh, with uh, people that uh, are joining from non-US countries. Uh, uh, yes, the, the, pack, the pack will be available uh, to, to, for everyone uh, in case any of you has any products, access, uh, any problems accessing to the, to the pack. Please, please feel free to write an email to info at fruzano.com and our customer service will be more than, than thankful uh, and uh, to, to give you a hand and help on, on those things. Right. And Deneb wanted to know if you pick specific products. No, this is for the pack. The pack is a set uh, selection of products that Gracie was talking about earlier. The 20% coupon can be uh, for whatever you decide to, to put in your... Um, in your uh, shopping cart. Um, so just scrolling back a little bit. So somebody uh, said that they wanted to hear a little bit more about diagnosis. Now, just so you all know, we have an article at FODMAP every day that discusses um, all kinds of fructose intolerance issues. It's written by a registered dietitian. Um, there is a section on diagnosis. So this is something that you can reference. Um, you know, it's funny, we're talking, we're sitting here and we're talking about, um, you know, delicious uh, things like uh, milk chocolate and gummy bears, and it can all seem like all sweetness and light. But the fact is that these are medical uh, situations that should be diagnosed uh, by a medical professional. And as with even with the low FODMAP diet, these are not try on for size things. We want to make sure that everybody is working with their medical team to get an accurate diagnosis for what it is that they are particularly dealing with. Um, but Chevy, the person did want to know a little bit more about the journey that happened for you and your daughter and how she got diagnosed. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to also link this one with another question that was uh, before in the chat. So uh, basically, my daughter, uh, the, the way she was diagnosed was with what is called air, air breathing test, uh, which is basically they are giving the, the person uh, a glass full of fructose. Uh, she is drinking that glass of, fruit, of fructose and she is breathing to one of those tools like like an alcoholic an alcohol test okay uh you need to breathe there before just before drinking the fructose and then you need to breathe there every uh, as far as i remember it's every 30 minutes okay uh and what this measure and what this is measuring is the the amount of uh, methane that uh your intestine is generating okay so uh, by by doing that uh thank you Denev. she's saying 25 minutes uh so um it, it's measuring the amount of methane that your intestine is producing, okay? And, and by, the, by the amount of methane that your intestine is producing, you can be uh, as diagnosed as fructose malabsorption of not. So if you reach a certain level, then you are you, you suffer from this, uh, this malabsorption. Symptomatology, something that we have not talked about. I've mentioned briefly before that uh, my youngest daughter, she was having issues with uh, inf inflated belly and so on. But the one thing that I did not mention was that when uh, we removed the fructose from, uh, from not only from her, but from the whole family, we also found out that my eldest daughter, who was suffering issues, skin issues all her life, 
she also was fructose intolerant. And since she removed fructose from her diet, all those skin issues just disappeared. And the worst thing of that, my wife also is fructose intolerant. And she has been have, suffering stomach problems all her life. And right now she's suffering from, from fibro, fibromyalgia, which there are also some studies that are pointing in the direction of excessive fructose uh, exposure, leading to chronic fatigue syndrome or even fibromyalgia in several cases. Okay, so that's that's something that's something important to mention. Uh, there was also another question in, in the chat talking about someone who who is suffering from uh, dairy free gluten intolerance and so on. Yes, we we are doing that. We we are suffering from those. My youngest daughter, uh, she is also lactose intolerant, and I'm also gluten sensitive sensi uh, sensitivity. So in our family, the fructose free, lactose free, uh, gluten free diet is quite present. Susie's asking if there is a relationship between uh, ish, uh, sensitivity to wheat fructans and fructose intolerance. There is fructo, fructans and uh, fructose, uh, these are different intolerances. You know, we, we find that there's about 36 or 37 uh, percent overlap for people who have IBS will have um, additional issues. Maybe fructose intolerance is is one of them. Um, yep. So you know you're not you're not in the uh, well. I guess you are in the minority, but there's still a statistically significant amount of people who are dealing with multiple intolerances. I guess is the way exactly, to... exactly. That's 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 the answer. Yes. Uh, Actually, says she doesn't see the pack on the website. No, the website. You're going to use the code. You're going to fill out the forms that you need, and the pack is going to be sent to you. The pack is not going to be seen by the general public. It's just for those of you who are here today. Yes, and, and again, any, any any issue accessing to the pack, please uh, feel free to write to uh, info at .com, mentioning this webinar, and uh, our customer service team will be more than happy to help. Yeah, right. So Diane okay. is and, mentioning... Anywhere in the world. Diane's mentioning the issue about the molecules. Yes, but the problem, the, the issue with fructose intolerance the, and the issue with like when you use the Monash app and you look up something and it says uh, this fruit is high in fructose, what they're talking about is the fructose in excess of the glucose. So what from a FODMAP perspective, we're not talking about zero fructose. We're talking about fructose and its balance, uh, its ratio with glucose. Fructose intolerances and malabsorption are different than FODMAP intolerances. And so if you're looking specifically at fructose issues, then there can be an extra sensitivity to fructose beyond what there would be in a FODMAP perspective. Do you think, yeah, Gracie, do you, do you think that's a good description? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I hope yeah. that answers your question. <laughs> um, but, you know, getting back to the test. So your daughter did these tests and, and going back to what I was saying before, you, this is something that would be medically directed. So you could talk to your uh, gastroenterologist, you could talk to your general practitioner. It's going to vary who you refer to depending on where you live in the world and what your insurance um, dictates. Um, yes. Even if you're currently working with a dietitian, they possibly can help you with this, but they would help you get the test. They would monitor the results. Um, this is something that you would do along yep. with them. Yes, and 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 this this is very important to to have those things always monitored by by an specialist. Uh, because just just to give you a, an idea, my, my wife she 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 was not able to drive uh, after after her test because she she was so severely fructose malabsorption that she was remaining in the hospital for the whole day. So uh, it is very important uh, that any of those tests are uh, controlled and uh, triggered and by, by, by an expert. So that's very, very important because every, every person reacts in a different way. Now, here's a really interesting question, and we don't have a dietitian on board. So do, can either of you answer Patrick's question, the difference between fructose intolerance and insulin resistance? That's a nice one. 
Uh, in theory, uh, fructose intolerance uh, is related with uh, fructose intake. So in theory, you should be capable to, to withstand glucose properly, while insulin resistance would be the other way around. Okay, So insulin resistance, uh, in theory, you are not going to be capable to withstand glucose, while in theory, you could be withstanding fructose. Okay, This is a completely generic completely generic because again that vary, that may vary from from person to person when you speaking of genetics so when you found out that your wife and your your kids had these issues all to varying degrees was was that a point in time where you found out that there was a genetic component or did you know that from the get-go we, we we know we know that uh we know as a true fact that there's nothing genetic in this case because 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 my my daughter, apart from the fructose intolerance, she is also suffering one of these rare diseases, uh, and uh, she hold or she she was holding a complete genetic uh, analysis, uh, as well as my wife. Okay, so we know that there there is nothing related there, but there there are some studies which are pointing on some kind of correlation, uh, not on the genes but in something that it's transferred from uh, parents to, to to kids but again it there's there's a lot of a uh, lot of studies that are ongoing now in regards with uh with fructose intolerance we we just wrote we was we actually were reading an article two days ago uh that was published in a in a US magazine in a US medical magazine which was pointing that uh the excessive fructose intake can also lead to uh, Alzheimer's disease. Hmm. Okay, so this was just published two days ago. Uh, of course, the conclusion was that uh, there are more more studies that needs to be done in this direction in order to prove that. But just to mention that, so there are lot lots of ongoing things in regards with with fructose because fructose, as as the mentioned in the beginning, is we can find fructose in honey and fruit. This is not the problem. The problem with fructose is that you, we can find fructose absolutely in every processed food that contains sugar or high fructose corn syrup, which this did not exist 30 years ago. Yeah, I have that's, a question that, for you. that's the main thing. You know, we know that with IBS, unfortunately, it can sometimes take people years to be accurately diagnosed and they can go through, you know, six plus doctors in the meantime, you know, they're miserable and they're having these digestive uh, symptoms. How does it work with, with fructose issues? I mean, you made it sound fairly direct. You were saying, you know, because when, when kids are little and you start feeding them, a lot of the foods that they're, they're typically fed will have a fructose content. And so if the child, if the baby um, is has a intolerance or a malabsorption issue that digestive upset uh, shows up pretty quickly. But is it that direct or, or do, do people with fructose issues do a lot of spinning their wheels and they just know this baby's tummy's upset, but it's hard to figure out what it is? It is, it is very direct when we are talking about uh, hereditary fructose intolerance. So when we are talking about hereditary fructose intolerance, it's very, very, very direct. So as soon as you are starting feeding your kid with uh, the first, usually fruit-containing food, that's direct. The fructose malabsorption is a completely different story. You, you could be driving from one doctor to another for years, 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 honestly, years. Uh, there are people which they are lucky and they just find it very quickly. There's people which they are just crawling around for years and uh, they do not they do not get any diagnose. So um, it, it, bas it basically depends a lot on 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 the the specialists that you have in in your in your area on your surrounding or or in your insurance that 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 varies a lot. Katie's asking if you have uh, references for the articles that you mentioned specifically about uh, fibromyalgia connection and CFS. I mean, maybe if we can get those, we can put them um, in the follow-up email. Also, just so you all 
all know, some people join late. We do have an interview on the website with uh, Chevy. We also have an article mm -hmm. written by a registered dietitian on yes. uh, these fructose uh, uh, issues. And there are references in that article for um, the, the, the specifics discussed in that article uh, might not be the same as what, what Chevy follows up exactly. with. There are some references in that article as well. So people are saying, so this person says she spun her wheels until age 43, um, followed FODMAP, and that helped her find her intolerances. And I think this is this is a, an important point, Katie. Thank you for mentioning that. You know, we, every day in our Facebook groups, we're you know, there's new people every day, right? And so new people are coming on board and they're at all different stages of the diet. But one thing that we see time and time again are people that are still in pain, still having IBS symptoms. They don't know what's causing them. They're incredibly frustrated. We understand that. They don't understand. They're like, help me. How can I figure out what's wrong with me, what's going on. And really, you know, you have to work with a medical professional. Dietitians are the rock stars. They can really help you fine tune what's going on with you. Don't suffer alone. First of all, you're not alone, right? So in terms of FODMAP intolerances and fructose issues, there's a great number of the population, a great percentage of the population who are dealing with this as well. So you're not alone, uh, but reach out and use the medical professionals that are at hand because they're going to help unwind that ball of yarn that is unique to you. Because just as even Chevy said, he's got three people in his family who all have um, some relationship to, to fructose, but each of those pictures looks a little different, right? You were saying, so it's every single one of you and your relationship to fructose and maybe FODMAPs and maybe, di you know, um, GERD and maybe, you know, whatever, um, is unique. And the dietitians are the ones that are really going to be able to help you understand how you personally, individually have to approach the diet to, to learn what is going to help you. Because the goal, the goal of Frisano and the goal of us at FODMAP every day is to help all of you eat well and keep your triggers at bay. I mean, that's what it comes down to. But to get to that point, you have to do some systematic um uh, we have to do medical tests and you have to do systematic eliminations and, you know, not just sort of throw darts at, at the wall because you won't get the data. Yes. I, and it's hard. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that uh, following those diets is easy. It's, it's not easy, especially in the beginning. It's hard because uh, it forces you to uh, eliminate many of your favorite foods. And that's, that's, that's what Fruzano's gold is. So uh, to make this ongoing process or path a little bit easier, that's 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 our goal. That's our goal. But it's very very hard. I'm 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 not gonna deny that we we receive daily calls from people, literally crying, uh, asking desperately for help. Uh, and we know it's hard. We know it's difficult. That's why sometimes a piece of chocolate is also very welcome. Right. We have two people who have said that working with uh, finding the right GI and the right dietitian just, you know, save their lives. And and that's the other thing, too. Right. It's not only hard. We're not going to soft pedal that. But like any medical uh, professional, sometimes the first one you go to isn't the right match for you. Right. So you, you need you might have to. Uh, search a little bit for the gastroenterologist who really sits there and listens to you and is willing to order the right test. And the same thing with the dietitians. Now, the beauty of dietitians these days is the one thing that COVID gave us, which was a blessing, was that more and more looked into doing remote uh, meetings and doing telehealth. And we have articles at FODMAP every day that help you understand how to find a dietitian, how to work with them remotely, set yourself up, set you up for success if you're doing telehealth. We have people in the U.S. working with dietitians in in you know in Luxembourg and 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 doing phenomenally. So you don't necessarily have to find a dietitian in your backyard. Um, someone had a question about uh, budget. 
and this is huge. You know, we have a lot of content uh, on at FODMAP every day that specifically addresses budget. Um, you know, and I think that it's like anything, right? You have to take a multi-pronged approach. So if it's Easter and you feel like, you know, you want to make sure that your child doesn't feel left out and you want to get them some chocolate so that they feel like they're, you know, a normal kid, like everybody else who's eating chocolate on Easter, then you, maybe you spend the money on the bar from Fusano because you know that it's it's going to suit your kids digestive tract. But when it comes to other foods, there are many foods in the supermarket that you can eat. It does take uh, education, self-education, right? We don't necessarily, you know, every food, I'm living with IBS. I've had IBS for 30 years at this point. The majority of food in my kitchen that has a special label is the minority, right? But it all came from uh, educating myself to the fact that I can buy a regular ketchup, I can buy a regular mustard, but maybe for my chocolate or a fruit spread, I'm going to spend the extra money. So it's a balance. And we understand that it's difficult, but there are, are, are ways to approach it that can make it more budget friendly. Uh, that exactly, and and if I can add something to to this point, uh, we we receive this this question several times. Why your chocolate is so much expensive than a regular chocolate? There are several ways to answer this question. The first one is, of course, the ingredients we are using, which are uh, different than the ones used in a in a normal chocolate. That's the that's one thing. But the other thing is that even though more and more people is becoming fructose intolerant and Luckily, uh, we we could we can produce more and more chocolate. We are still producing a, a very small portion of the chocolate that is produced in the world. So those facility, those chocolate producers that makes tons of tons of tons of tons of chocolate per year, of course, their production costs are much 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 lower than ours. And uh, we we are happy to reduce costs. This is something that actually we've done several times. Uh, as soon as we are capable to produce more, if we can transfer this to the public, of course, we will be more than happy to do that. That's 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 our main goal as well, to, to provide products that are affordable for everyone. And another thing that we hadn't mentioned is that you focus on organic as well. Yep, that's and, that's and true. So that's another level that you're bringing to the table and organic products often do cost more. There is a market who of people who are really interested in making sure that they eat as organically as possible. So while that can affect price, it also can serve um, a subset of people. Uh, you know, it's a very important thing for them. Now, this is a really interesting question. Can you see that, Chevy, from Carol? She wants to know if you know, of, have you heard of any diseases that affect the results of the fructose test? It looks like she's had problems even getting diagnosed. Uh, yes, uh, I, I, I've heard of any diseases that are affecting the fructose test. Uh, again, I, I'm not, I'm not an, a doctor, I'm not an expert, but actually I have a friend whom uh, is, well, was diagnosed with uh, bacteria overgrowth uh, as well as fructose intolerance. And uh, she was mentioned by her doctor that the bacteria overgrowth could be triggering the fructose intolerance. Okay, so basically her diagnosis was not fructose intolerance, was bacteria overgrowth. Meaning okay, so SIBO, that, you're talking about the small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Exactly, that one, yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, so yes, I know that, but because because that's again a friend of mine that uh, w that was suffering this diagnosis. Uh, so, so yes, there there are there are some some of those uh, that are triggering. So, so for example, also uh, something dif different, uh, but uh, the celiac the celiac disease could trigger also a lactose intolerance. Uh, but it's not because you are a lactose intolerant. It's because the intestine permeability changes with your celiac with your celiac disease and it can trigger a temporary lactose intolerance up, up until your intestine is recovered again. That's fascinating. Okay, so there are there are lots lots of things that are that could trigger to a to a to a wrong diagnosis. Interesting. Well, Carol, I hope that that helps you a little bit. 
she um yeah she had to stop after the very beginning of the test because it just uh threw the 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 fine the 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 results were were completely off the chart and out of whack. Um, we have someone who says that Frisano has given her, uh, given them some happy moments that they couldn't have before. I mean, that's, thank you for writing that. You know, this is baby steps, people. <laughs> you know, it's like whether you're just dealing with uh, FODMAP issues or whether you also have uh, fructose sensitivities, we understand that this can be really overwhelming. What, what companies like Frusano try to do and what we do at FODMAP every day is we try to help you understand that, well, we give you a lot of education. You do have to do self-education for any of the things that we just mentioned. Um, but every change that you make. Every change that you make to help yourself is going to move you for, further towards that goal of having uh, your symptoms managed. So, you know, we applaud the hard work. We know it's there. We're here with you trying to help you along. Um, so we're, we're coming towards the end. So if you guys have any more questions... Oh, that's interesting. So how do you deal with it mentally? That's a great question. That's a great question. Uh, it's it's not easy, of course. Uh, it it requires some some external help. It requires some some external help uh, from well from from experts. Uh, my 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 daughter, she has been visiting. Uh, a doctor for for all, well since since she was diagnosed it's 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 complicated it's very complicated uh just one thing just to give you a, an idea so when my daughter was diagnosed she she was eight year old uh, and we were mentioning that before the 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 webinar with robin and the day so every single uh party that she was attending with her friends she was the only one leaving that party without any candies because all candies are containing fructose. And she was coming from every party crying like hell, saying, I want my candies. Why I cannot have candies? It, it's hard. It's hard. Uh, and the only, in, in most of the cases, you, you, you need external help. That's, that's, that's the only answer I can give. It's, it's very hard. You know, and it's, it's a funny thing. I, I, I look in the Facebook groups and, people come and they ask questions because they're desperate, um, but they're often asking serious medical questions um, of all these lay people, right, that are in the Facebook group. And I, I keep trying to figure out an analogy that would be good, and I never come up with one because I don't want to sound like I'm browbeating people, but I just feel like you know, if you had a heart problem, would you be going into a Facebook group and asking non-medical professionals like, you know, oh, I'm feeling this way and what do I do? And it's, there's something about gastrointestinal issues where people don't think they're serious enough, even though they're like in pain and they're coming home from parties crying and they're having to leave work because they're so bloated that their pants are literally like they can't function. And yet they don't go to the GI, they don't hire the dietitian. Like I don't actually know what that disconnect is. And like you said, you you there are medical professionals, whether it's a physical medical professional, like a GI or a dietitian, or whether it's a mental health counselor, these people are here to help you live your life to the best that you can. And if yes. part of your life is being overtaken by GI issues, then that's an issue to discuss with this broad group of medical professionals. And we encourage all of you to do so because we want we want you all to be eating and living as positively as you can. Yes. You know, it's so I see I saw some people nodding. I mean, I don't know. I just I just think it's interesting. <laughs> So let's see, I think part of the issue with this disease that it's not covered by insurance. So this is, you know, this is really true, you know, especially in the U.S., 
We don't have uh, coverage for dietitians. Um, this certainly varies depending on your insurance, certainly depends de uh, where you live in the world. But Robin and I have done a lot of uh, looking into this from a statistical point of view and from an anecdotal point of view. And I can tell you that it ends up being more economical if you work with a dietitian in the beginning for a couple of reasons. First of all, you're not gonna spend months or years buying foods that were not right for you, supplements that were not right for you, gadgets that were not right for you, right? Plus you're gonna be in pain all that time. So we actually find that it works to your economic advantage to work with a dietitian from the beginning. And the other thing that I just wanna point out is that, um, you know, people who have never worked with a dietitian before, they don't ne necessarily understand what that looks like. And literally one, two or three appointments can make the difference between you spinning your wheels, still in pain, not what's going, knowing what's going on and getting a handle on how you need to structure your diet. So it doesn't have to be this long ongoing thing. It literally can be putting aside some money for a few visits. So yeah, gaslighting for the medical community, as Robin said, people not believing us. You know, hopefully we we think that that's getting better. You know, we we look at Robin and I talk a lot about um, social media. I mean, you go out on Instagram or TikTok these days or Facebook, and people are no longer embarrassed to talk about diarrhea and constipation and looking six months pregnant, even though you're a guy or you're a seventy year old woman. And you know, we applaud this because these are real issues. Uh, Becky's saying it's much more recognized in Europe. Yes. That's that's and true. Jane, but, not uh, all GI docs care about anything. Okay, we're 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 gonna sign off pretty soon, but I just want to say, Jane, you're absolutely right. Uh, we have an article on our website at FODMAP Every Day that I think is really important. It talks about the role of the gastroenterologist versus the role of the dietitian. Gastroenterologists are not nutritionists. They're not trained in nutrition, but because they're not, that's not actually their role. Uh, and the article will take you through it. This is why we constantly bring up dietitians. Um, so anyway, we're coming to the last minute. Uh, uh, Gracie, Chevy, do you want to have the last word? I, uh, if I, if I, if I can, if I can take the, the, the opportunity just to thank you everyone for joining, uh, thank you very much for, for all your, uh, questions, uh, just, uh, some light of hope, uh, is getting better. Uh, everything is getting better. So, uh, when we started the, the, the process with my daughter uh, in 2015 till today, we have seen a huge change, uh, in this case in Spain. But uh, I know that it's getting better every other country in the world. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for joining. Again, any help we can provide, uh, info at fusano.com. Uh, reach to Gracie, myself, Robin, or Dede. We all will be more than happy to help. Yes, please follow. If you don't follow us already, please follow Fusano on Instagram, on all their social channels, FODMAP every day as well. And we will be following up with all of you in the next couple of days with an email. We'll be giving you the links to watch this again, all the information that you need. And thank you so much for being here, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye.